What's up? It's your boy, Centron, coming back at you with another thought of the day. Living in Japan, if you come across someone who has mixed heritage, or are one yourself, or just well-versed with Japanese culture, you've at least heard of the word half food, or half in non-katakana English. I abhor this word. I know that when it's said, most of the time it's not meant with malicious intent, but kind of like the word itself, it just divides compartmentalizing a person or a group of people to a very narrow definition of being, labeling them as other, thus confining that individual to a predetermined existence when they are a living, breathing, evolving creature capable of the opposite of infinitesimal and isolating them from the pack, which is the most damning of the bunch. This thought of the day stems from my encounter with a child during an open class. The parents were Japanese and the daughter favored her mother. But the year and a half year old young boy, a baby, caught my eye for physiological reasons. He had blonde lashes, extremely fair skin, blonde hair, and what appeared to be sunburns from overexposure to the sun. I would assume. I couldn't help but stare for a bit and steal glances here and there, caught up in his beauty. Achan has strikingly different features that are not common to see, thus making him appealing to gaze upon and wonder about scientific curiosities and how interesting genetic outcomes are with us humans. That aside for a second, he, like I, looked different from most Japanese on the exterior, making us stand out. We differ in what draws a gander, but it's shared that we, provo- pe- we provoke longing looks from people for a gambit of reasons. A closer look through a closer look though shows these same genes flexing their familial might as beyond the seasoning. His meat and bones favor his parents strongly. It's undeniable that is their child. Yet, because of the identity of such a word as half or half and its negative connotations, there's a pretty likely chance that this beautiful, innocent young child will have to bear the sins of the culture he lives in and be labeled by his outer appearance despite his DNA telling the story completely the other direction. The same goes for children of mixed blood raised inside or outside of the Japanese country borders who are every bit as Japanese as anyone else here despite the percentages of heritage that make them up. Based upon their physical traits, he and children that have parents that are not homogenous will have to endure comments, attitudes, different treatment, and potentially abuse regarding some something that they had no choice in choosing, their appearance. All because they don't conform with the antiquated notion of someone's idea of how a person from this island country should look. Beyond ridiculous, silly, primitive, shameful and uncouth. If we took a close look at the history of this country, most would be unpleasantly surprised at not only how their ancestors used to look, juxtaposed to their current ideas of the ideal person here, but also what transpired with minority groups with oppression. But that's a video for another day. When people use that word, what are their motives behind doing so? Half or half. It's to make sure to convey to that person that they are not the norm. 
aren't a traditional Japanese person, like the individual saying it, or the standard definition. That they have another culture or cultures that preclude them from being 100% Japanese, excluding them from claiming that right. How this could not be seen as excluding someone is beyond me. Everyone wants to belong. Being as humans are a tribal bunch. By splitting someone in half, you are effectively dividing their identity, forcing them to choose between this world and that one. Us or them. There are no teams. Come on, our people. Just one race. The human race. The need to find and assign a place for everyone lies in supremacy and in the ideas of otherism meant to keep us separate. That's a fallacy of social constructs and social engineering. One quick question for you. Why do you like what you like? Or why are you the way you are? Is that 100% completely intrinsic to your nature? Or is nurture by individuals and the collective a bigger presence in the ledger than you think? I'll tell you. My shirt can be 80% cotton and 20% polyester. My milk, 2% fat free. And my bag, 60% 60% made of made up of recyclable goods. However, I would never, and I mean never, put those percentages on a human being. My people used to be called three-fifths of a human. Three-fifths of a, of a person. Not even a whole human being. The denigration may not be the same, but it's similar enough. Insulting doesn't even begin to approach what that is. Stop trying to put people in a box based on your definition of them or societies to fit your worldview. Deal with them on the basis of an individual identity, divorced from preconceived ideas. Get to know the person and you'll see what's as clear as day. That they are the most related thing to you in this universe. Human. I've mused long and hard with this one. But these are just my thoughts of the day. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and if you like.